Hello everybody, Stuart here from Riku. Just wanted to do a quick update on AI21. It is a large language model provider. You could say a competitor to OpenAI. They have WordTune for paraphrasing and rephrasing, but they also have some pretty great large language models that you can play with today. And they've just given them all a rather big upgrade. So this video is all about diving into AI21 a bit closer, looking at the new pricing structure that they have, and also looking at the upgrade that they have made to the models. And best of all, all of their models are free to use until the 1st of May. So you have the whole of April to try them out and see how you get on. So let's have a look at the pros and cons of using AI21 in your workflows. So one of the things with the pricing from AI21, and I believe they have simplified it, but they haven't actually removed this $29 a month minimum billing. So that is a bit of a sticker, but when you do sign up, you get uh, $90 credit for three months and you don't need to put a card on. So for experimenting and trying out all of the things that they offer, that can be a good option for you. They sort of go over everything that you can do. You can do custom model training whilst you're in the trial. So that is pretty cool. So they have the foundation models. So these are the base models. Sort of if you're used to OpenAI, it's the Babbage, Curie, DaVinci style models that you can then build on top of. And you can see that the biggest of these models is the Jumbo, which is the most expensive at 0.015 per thousand tokens and you can fine tune on top of the jumbo model to create something super awesome they then have the grand model which is 0.01 per thousand tokens and last of all they have the large model which is the cheapest model at 0.003 per thousand tokens and you'll notice with the uh the Jumbo and the Grand, they actually have an Instruct. It seems that they haven't updated this here with the different names of what the models are, but the rest of it is correct. So then it sort of goes to what a token is, and they say that on average, their token is about one word or six characters. Now, OpenAI tend to say that theirs is about four characters, and through my earlier testing with uh, AI21, I would say that their tokenizer is a lot more lenient, and you do tend to get more output for your buck with what AI21 offers. And then they just sort of go through um, some frequently asked questions on this. So one of the things that is good with uh, AI21 is once you've actually fine-tuned a model, it is the same cost as the base model that you fine tuned it on. So there is no crazy markup, you know, OpenAI charges three times the amount when you use a fine tune compared to the base model. So being able to use something for the same price, but get the better output because you've added all your data, you've added all the relevant stuff is a massive upgrade. So this is why I think it's worth coming and reconsidering AI21 because of this. I think I'm actually on the uh, V2 pricing. So let me just uh, do this because I think this one is actually a uh, better understanding of what they've done. So a lot of it is actually the same. You know, there's still the $29 a month. But here you have the task specific APIs. And if you weren't aware, AI21 is the company behind WordTune. So you can use the same APIs that WordTune uses with paraphrase, summarize, grammatical error corrections, text segmentation, and we have the text improvements. So these are super, super interesting, especially what you have, the text segmentation, and then feeding that in to something like this, you then start to go a little bit crazy in your head with the workflows that are possible, right? Because you can take the text from any website, get paragraphs returned from you, so it's automatically stripping all of the HTML out, 
and then you can ask questions on it. Or you can take this text, put it into a vector database, and then you can ask questions on it as you want. So this is uh, super cool and super nice to have these task-specific APIs. I think that they are a really nice idea, really great to have these things. And I think once you sort of start chaining together, you get some really nice workflows. And that's definitely what I'm thinking about. The contextual answers is similar to the one with Aleph Alpha that we've sort of previewed in a previous video. You can put up to 10 thousand characters into a string, like 10,000 characters of a document, and then you can ask questions of it and it's going to give you a response. So that is an overview of the AI21 pricing. Let's go into some of the differences between the J1 version of the models and the J2 version of the models. Some of the differences between the J1 and the J2, we've come to the playground within AI21. Of course, you can use these models within Roku, where you can use all of the best large language models, whether at AI21, Cohere, OpenAI, all the best in open source, all in one place. Um, so we're on the J1 Jumbo, and you see the max completion length is 2047. So it's running on a 2048 uh, completion length token uh, limit which is what most of the models had. And it's what, you know, it's what OpenAI had, it's what Cohere has, it's what uh, a lot of the uh, open source models have um, until OpenAI released DaVinci, which had a 4,000. And now later with GPT-4 and I believe Anthropic, with they're doing what they're doing with Claude, they have an even bigger token limit where it sort of goes up to 8K. And I think GPT-4 will release a 32K version in the future, which is seriously massive. So this is one of the J1 ones. If we come in to the J2, we see that now we have a token limit of 8,191. So this means that they have increased the amount of tokens that you can put within your prompt or that you can generate 4x. So it's four times as big as it was before. So that means if you want to, you can put more examples within your prompt to make it give you better outputs, better relevant outputs to your business based on the inputs that you specified. Or if you're using it more as like a writing assistant tool, then you're going to get more and more context or you know, a chat box sort of conversation -y type thing, you can put more context in because it's going to know the last 8,191 tokens. And if we sort of do that as a comparison, a token is generally equivalent to about four characters. So we times the tokens by four, 8,200 by four is going to give you 32,800 tokens. 32,800 characters approximately. So that is a massive, massive, massive upgrade in the memory of this model. And you should definitely try it out. So this is the same for all of the base models, J2 Jumbo, J2 Grand, and J2 Large. If you want to um, use the Instruct, the Instruct versions still have a completion length of 2048 so these are still coming um and there's going to be lots of uh improvements in the future i'm sure by the team on this so we have the new upgraded models but why am i sort of so excited about this because with open ai when you fine tune with open ai you are limited to the base models. So they still have the, you, it's the older version of DaVinci or Curie or whatever, and you're limited by the 2048 token limit. Whereas if I want to train with these, then we get the bigger token limit. So let's go into that in the next part of the video. Tuning models is an excellent way of getting more context, more information, and getting a more relevant output for your business based on the data that you feed in. Remember in Riku, we make this super simple where you can start building out your data sets within our data set studio, where you can start building it out line by line and you'll get the preview each time as you go. 
And if you have all of your data within a CSV file, then we have our CSV to JSON L converter where you can just name your data set, upload the CSV file and get the beautiful JSON L file back out. So it makes it very easy to uh, create data sets to do fine tuning. And then to actually do the fine tune, we come into the fine tune, we hit new fine tune, we can upload the JSON L, give it a name, choose whether we want AI21 or um, OpenAI, and we can do the fine tuning on this. Um, in terms of AI21 versus OpenAI for fine tuning, why might you want to use one instead of the other? Well, one, as I'm told, the fine tuning for the J2 models is coming in a few weeks. So when that is done, you'll be able to have a larger uh, text within each example. So your JSON L file could be full of pretty much 32 files and characters on each line in your examples. And then your, uh, your fine tuned model afterwards will be able to spit out massive amounts of text which is much larger than you can do with the OpenAI 2048 limit, which they have. So that is one of the reasons why, why you might consider AI21 over OpenAI for this. The second reason is the terms for AI21 are a bit, uh, they're a bit less restrictive than OpenAI. Um, OpenAI have a lot of use cases which you can't do, you can't go anywhere near, whereas AI21 are a bit more liberal, you could say, in some of the things that they allow you to do. Um, for example, you know, I, I know it's not for everyone, but there's nothing in the AI21 terms about creating uh, AI models for adult content or stuff like that. Um, so that's an option if, if that's an area that you want to go down if you tried to build something out with another technology and you think i'd never be able to do this on open ai because their terms are too restrictive then it's always good to have a backup and this is why i think other companies and open source models are so important to give people the ability to play and to create what they want um and also just to sort of be treated like an adult and sort of know what you're trying to do with this technology. So there are a couple of reasons why um, AI21 is a good option for fine tuning. And I think with this latest, latest update, it's something that if you had explored it in the past, gone away and thought, you know, I don't like this, I'm gonna use one of these other technologies, it might be worth reloading up your account or registering a new one and having another play and seeing how you get on. Um, I think it's definitely worth doing and I'll be playing with it a bit more in the future as well. So just to round up this video, AI21 have moved from the Jurassic 1 version of their models to Jurassic 2. They've got a massive increase in the token length and best of all, all of these models are free to use. Yes, free to use until the 1st of May. So you may want to sign up and play with them for yourself today. It's something that I will be doing and I think with the upgraded models and the pace of change within AI, it's always good to play with different large language models, see which one suits your needs best and sort of experiment. You know, that's what it's all about. There's no point in using a large language model that costs, you know, way up if you can use one which is maybe lesser cost and it does the job for you. Similarly, you need to know which large language model can be used for your use case because some use cases are disallowed in the terms and conditions of different large language model providers. So AI21 is a good choice if you maybe have looked at doing something with OpenAI and thought there's no way that I can get that done within the terms or you're just looking for a different company and an alternative to what you're trying to do. Um, that wraps up this video and we've put the J2 models live on Riku today. So if you want to play with them, come to riku.ai. We have all of the best large language models in a single place for you to experiment 
to learn, enjoy, and deploy them in your own apps, embed them, do what you want with them, all in a friendly place without any code. If that sounds nice, consider signing up. And if you want to learn more about AI, consider joining our Facebook group and I'll leave a link to that down below. Thank you.